Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss how to be reliable and deal a massive amount of damage with Kate Bishop during the boss fight of the Elite Raid. This will be 100% legit and does not require any form of cheese. Not that there is anything wrong with glitching Claw out by flying above the Panther statue for a guaranteed one phase, but it doesn't feel as good as the nice old fashioned, clean, one phase. Many players tend to always send Kate to the back, but with the right setup, Kate can be vital in securing what I like to call the quadruple crown, which are 1. Anti-metal room 1 phase 2. Zero phase of the eye 3. Fully stunning claw before he lifts his hammer and 4. A one phase claw defeat Today, we will be covering what you need to do in order to be successful in the last two phases of the quadruple crown. We begin with the stun phase. For the stats, the most important one is proficiency. You want to have as many of your shots crit as possible. Damage does not matter during the stun phase, but the reliability of stun explosion and cosmic surge buffs will be crucial. Intensity doesn't matter so much and a roll or two could possibly help, but as you can see here, the perks consistently activating will be more useful to you, especially if you have an Iron Man or a Kamala helping out with the stun. This goes for most characters. I see a lot of players trying to place all of their stats into intensity instead of using a stun payload mixed with proficiency in order to guarantee massive stun damage. For slot 1, I always run this 2.2% heroic recharge piece. The reason why I use this is because with this perk, every time Kate becomes overcharged, her heroic meter recharges 200% faster. This is needed to consistently keep your decoy in the fight and always keep your heroics. On slot 2, you need to base it on the teammates you are playing with. I cannot stress this enough. There are two ways to look at it. If you have an Iron Man doing his Hulkbuster thing and a Kamala doing her light combo while I'm behind, you are guaranteed to one phase if you contribute by using a stun explosion scatter shot piece. If you have those characters on your team, then always run this. As a matter of fact, if you have two characters who know what they are doing and are all running stun payload gear, then run this piece. You will fully fill Claw's stun meter before he lifts his arm. Speaking of Claw's arm, all of you Hulk players who activate your assault heroic, causing Claw's arm to disappear, please stop doing that. It's stupid. It's a lot easier to deal stun damage while under Claw's arm and activating your assault heroic to make Claw's arm disappear provides no additional benefits. Stop doing it. Thank you. If you are playing with randoms and you do not know what they are wearing, or if your teammates are not Iron Man and Kamala, or two other characters running pulse stun pieces, a heroic charge burst on slot 2 will be your best bet. Yes, the stun scatter shot piece could definitely help out, but if you do not have dedicated teammates doing stun, you will not fully stun claw before he lifts his arm, no matter what you wear. The slot 1 heroic charge piece will ensure your decoy availability throughout the entirety of the stun phase, as well as the boss fight. When you are overcharged and proc a heroic recharge from ranged critical attacks, the bonus 200% heroic recharge rate will allow your decoy to come back nearly immediately. The decoy is what will be doing most of your stun as well. Slot 3 doesn't matter. For slot 4, I roof on this piece that increases the decoy duration and effectiveness. You can get this piece from flashback missions. The duration will come in handy, as you'll need those extra few seconds, especially in the case of you and your teammates not fully stunning Claw before he lifts his arm. For my minor artifact, I always wear a triple proficiency ISO and a triple precision piece. The only reason I do not run a reactive cosmic surge is because I do not plan on getting hit, as we will be dealing damage while in the safe area under Claw's arm. The only skills that matter are these. If you set your decoy to these two skills, Claw will take an immeasurable amount of stun. This is most important. These two selections will nearly fill Claw's stun meter to halfway full before the decoy runs out. Now that we have the gear and skills, let's move on to the execution. You simply want to activate your decoy under Claw's arm right before he slams and let your scattershot and decoy do the work. If you are doing a speed run and plan on going to the back, you could activate your ultimate well before Claw slams his hammer. This way, it will be on cooldown. Once you enter the area where Claw slams his hammer, activate all of your assault heroics so they are on cooldown as well. Right before Claw slams, activate your decoy under his arm. When your decoy is about to run out, activate the dark hold. Make sure your heroics are on cooldown. This will immediately give you every heroic back, allowing you to use your decoy for stun damage a second time. 
This major artifact is really useful if you plan on going to the back and do not have a slot 1 piece with 200% heroic recharge. If you do plan on staying out for the claw fight, make sure you have your gear in appropriate location so you can make a quick gear swap and do not use your major artifact. Before we begin covering the gear, let's put a theory to rest. No matter the character, you will always deal more damage against Claw if you have Vibranium as your primary damage source. What do I mean by this? You can have a Shock Tax Surge piece mixed with a Vibranium payload so you battery and a 16 hit damage buff, both with Valorant Precision, and you still would not do as much damage as you would if you ran Vibranium Scatter Shots and no battery. Vibranium payloads are not enough. The primary damage source must always be Vibranium if you want to maximize your damage. Once you find the primary attack you want to use, no matter the character, make sure it deals Vibranium and then build around that attack with different damage perks. I have tried nearly every combination, whether that be high valor with damage buff and tech surge, stacking potentiators and buffs, and even using her warp arrows. None of it matters unless you are using Vibranium as your primary damage source. Moving on to the gear choices for the fight. For slot 2, I always use this Hawk Bird's Arrow Mark 6. This piece can be obtained by completing Elite Vaults. This piece is similar to the Elite Raid piece, as they both have 20% increased damage from scatter shot arrows, except the Raid piece can roll with Valor. From my experience, the 20% increased rate of fire trumps the Elite Raid piece in every which way. Here you can see a Microsoft Excel sheet of a random on face that I was a part of. As you can see, I went through frame by frame and calculated the total damage per frame, damage per second, and total damage. Claw has a health pool of about 10 million, and Kate did about 4.5 million. As long as another player is dealing about 4 to 5 million and you have a thought to freeze him, you should secure the one face, especially if Claw has cryo on him. No other status effect should be used for Claw except Vibranium. I have been told that several differing scattershot status types that are not Vibranium arrows work wonders versus Claw, so I used several and combined them with a damage buff. Increased damage when Quantum Surge is active, and each scattershot arrow only did about 20,000 damage compared to 90,000 from each Vibranium arrow. One thing to note, Warrior's Fury helps tremendously. Make sure your teammate equips both selections in Thor's skill tree that boost teammate damage, but even without a Thorps or Iron Man, a one phase is still very possible. For slot 1, I recommend increasing the 20% rate of fire by 10 more percent. There are not many slot 1 perks that will be beneficial in this fight. You can get this piece from vendors and random drops. One thing several Kate Bishop mains consistently get wrong is gear selections in general, especially slot 1. Take this provocateur's edge. A lot of players love it because it is an exotic and it has a 20% increased damage when Quantum Surge is active. If a piece does not have Valor, but has increased damage when X is active, it will likely give you less consistent damage than a piece with Valorant Precision. And this piece do not have Valor. Also, her Quantum Surge only lasts 5 seconds, so taking a 20% damage increase for a few seconds, just to deal less damage than you would if you have a Valor piece on makes no sense. This same concept applies to her and every character. If you do not have a slot 1, I would recommend a stat stuffer or Tachi and Surge gear piece with Valorant Precision. Just make sure you change the skill selection so your melee intrinsic attacks crit more often. Kate Bishop has some of the slowest standard melee attacks in the game and has an even lower crit rate. This skill will help and the other two will not be needed in the boss fight. You could also run a Cryo Signature attack piece. Cryo Signature is one of the few statuses that will fully fill Claw's status meter. The others being Vibranium and Gamma this could be helpful if you do not have a Thor or Hawkeye applying Cryo, or in Hulk's case, Sonic. One thing to note is that even Cryo is extremely slow in filling the status meter. Cryo Signature attack pieces can be found in vendors and random gear drops and can also be farmed from the Heroic Gauntlet. I would recommend running the Gauntlet, as those slot 1 pieces can roll with the Potentiator. If you do not have either pieces stated, feel free to run whatever gives you the most Valorant precision. I also tested out several signature attack pieces. Most do not fully fill the status meter. Gamma is not that bad. Here are a few clips.
for slot 3 I run this vest that increases damage to enemies afflicted with vibranium. If you do not have this piece, I recommend running anything with the highest Valorant precision. Kate does not have many slot 3 gear pieces that attribute to increased damage. On slot 4, I run the Archer's Charm. It can be acquired from villain sectors and hives. The Helicarrier will typically sail this piece at least once a week also. You want this, as well as the rest of your gear for this objective to only have 2 stats. Why 2 stats? Defense in this game has always been a joke, so has difficulty. Other than that, a build with all gear being 2 stats of precision and valor could give you about 70 more Valorant 70 more precision than a build that has Valorant precision on every gear piece, but with 3 stats. This is almost like running an extra minor artifact. For example, if I change all of my pieces with Valor into 2 stat Valor pieces, my crit damage increases by about 40%. The main reason you want this piece is because of the 16 hit damage buff combined with the high stats. To anyone who says well you don't need a damage buff or vibranium for floor, they can go struggle all by themselves. You may not need it, but you want it, since it increases damage by about 60%, more than any other perk in the game. If you do not have this piece, anything with a 16 hit damage buff would be best. Agent's Charm is the other best option, as it increases your damage by 20% when overcharged. I honestly do not know if the first perk works, but every time I one face with Kate and no Iron Man, which is usually every 3 or 4 raids depending on who I am running with, I use this piece to debuff the enemy. Apparently it decreases the enemy defense by 30%. I have had times where Kate has done a decent amount of damage, but the enemy's defense dropped by a tremendous amount, take this for example. Or this where Kate took the super adaptoid health from 100 to 0 nigga real quick. Real quick. One thing that I know does work is this skill that increases the crit chance of you and your teammates to any enemy debuffed by the razor arrow. This combined with the support heroic of another character will consistently give you guaranteed crits and since the disruptor extension increases the duration from 9 to 12 seconds, you will have just enough time to one phase while Claw is stomping, as the stomp typically lasts no longer than 12 seconds. For my minor artifacts, I run two triple precision ISOs. For the skills, you still would prefer to have these two on the decoy active, as it deals the most damage, but be aware that the decoy is pretty useless versus Claw. For this intrinsic selection, it doesn't really matter. I typically choose this option, as the other two provide no damage benefit. You can only kill Claw once and his status meter will be filled when you are overcharged anyway. For the major artifact, I will still use the stone. As of now it's bugged and does not give the extra damage upon activation for several players, and quite frankly it is a shame that CD has not fixed this, added optional difficulty, or many common practices that make looter shoot as good, and any time things as such are brought up, it is met with negative feedback like, you are being a sweat, or don't you you save wizard, why are you asking for difficulty, I don't use save wizard by the way, but while I am on the topic, wanting optional difficulty has nothing to do with being a try hard, it boosts the game's health. What do I mean by this? When is the last time you have seen a Hawkeye use the support heroic that revives? Or Thor using the willpower boost for the ultimate? Probably never. Or when is the last time you and your teammates actually talked about team strategies, from synchronizing who will be a sender and rotating buffs? With typical looter shooters, the higher difficulty, the more challenging and rewarding it becomes. While normal and challenging activities just add more enemies and HP, brutal missions will completely change the mission, adding new enemy types and vastly different and more challenging AI. The brutal missions in most looter shooters are amazing to run with the group. If you are running a squad, who have a dedicated healer, which is not needed at all now, and two other players who run what many looters with difficulty refer to as skill builds. The 200% heroic recharge could be implemented into skill builds, but the game has a huge balancing issues, as these pieces come one the most insane gear and because crit damage and heroic damage is tied together by valor. If heroic and crit damage were separated, you could actually have a class system where someone could spam heroics, but not receive the benefits of having high ranged or melee damage since crit damage and heroic damage are separated. This will cause the need for a fourth stat skill damage. This allows for player choice. Do you run a build where you can do several assault heroics, but wimpy damage on scatter shots and low defense? Yeah you could, as long as you build for it and have a well synchronized team. I know adding a fourth stat could change several builds, but it has been needed for a while. To counterbalance the RNG, have better gear drop from the open world, even exotics. Let it train. 
but make gear drop quality based on the difficulty of the mission. So if you complete a brutal Omega level threat, at some point in the mission, an enemy will drop an Omega exotic piece. If the mission is on hard, or plus 10 difficulty, you may have to play the Omega level threat 3 or 4 times before you get an open world exotic. If you're playing on negative 20 difficulty, which is what it's currently set to if you have a 175 character, the chances of you getting an open world exotic from the OLT is slim to none. Increasing difficulty also makes gear better. For example, everyone right now is searching for that god roll tachi and surge damage buff piece. That is because it is the best piece in the game. But as anyone who has competed in timed brutal harm room events could tell you, oftentimes, tachi and surge and a damage buff is not the best option. But a game where enemies die in a few hits, no matter what gear you are wearing, combined with horrible RNG, finding that perfect piece is more of a bragging right, instead of a necessity. And for the health of this game, some kind of change is needed. Before we leave, one quick tip. Make sure you enter your damage buff phase before Claw begins to stomp. This way, you get the 60% damage increase for the duration of the fight instead of at the end. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.